So I've had the Mac Studio and Apple Studio display now for four months. How has it been going? What do I like? What do I dislike? And do I have any regrets? Feels like four months is enough time to give an intermediate update. A midterm? No, this isn't a test. What do you call an update that's not short-term first impressions and isn't long-term? Anyways, I've used this setup now every day fitting into my workflow and have some updated thoughts. Let's first describe what that workflow is. I make YouTube videos, Instagram reels, short form content, which entails a lot of video editing, a little bit of sound design, and of course, making thumbnails. I am a Sony shooter, and I'm just about always in S-Log3, even though a talking head video like this doesn't necessarily need that extra dynamic range. I'm always in 4K, and I do a variety of 24, 30, and 60 FPS content. I also mix and match H.264 and H.265 video files together with no rhyme or reason. I edit in Final Cut Pro and I typically use Pixelmator Pro to make my thumbnails. I'm also a photographer. I'd label that more of a hobby and kind of a slow burn. It's not something I do every day. I do make it a habit though if I'm going somewhere on a trip, I'll take my camera with me. So I also use Lightroom to edit photos and export to various social media platforms. And the Mac Studio and Apple Studio display are perfect for this sort of workflow. It handles this stuff flawlessly. Now Final Cut Pro itself will occasionally have some stutters, mainly if I leave it open too long, come back from the computer being asleep and wake it up and it's been open a few days. Occasionally the program just needs restarted. Now I've only had to restart the computer itself one time in four months. Notably, this was after a Final Cut Pro update. I had one piece of footage that did not quite render right. There was about a half a second of the footage that was showing a black screen and green screen that wasn't there in the original file. Final Cut Pro was kind of choking on it. So I closed the program, restarted the computer. This was resolved on the reboot. Sometimes these things happen. I typically have Clean My Mac running in the background as well, and there was only one time that I remember it notified me that I was running low on system memory, which I think is important. I made the point in my first video that 32 gigabytes was more than enough memory, and I found that to be true. I remember that instance, and I had Photoshop, Lightroom, Final Cut Pro, and the various other programs that I use day to day, Safari, Todoist, the Calendar, Apple Notes, you know, everything open. So if I don't make a point of closing down apps when I'm doing a specific high intensity task. I just let the system do its memory swap thing and go on about my day. And that's worked out well for me. Export times in Final Cut Pro have been blazing fast. I did try out Adobe Premiere Pro. And while the export times weren't slow by any means, they were definitely just a hair behind Final Cut Pro for a similar sized video. And obviously this M2 Max Mac Studio is worlds above and beyond my M1 MacBook Air in terms of multiple exports. So one video after another, if I'm exporting the long file for YouTube, then a short or maybe multiple shorts. This was where the MacBook Air for me was struggling obviously because it doesn't have a fan. The heat load was just too much at that point and after extended periods of exporting and rendering video, the MacBook Air definitely slows down and that is noticeable. Now, on the Mac Studio, I haven't noticed any performance degradation, meaning there hasn't been a time I've been sitting here thinking, man, I wish my computer was faster. And if I'm not noticing it, that probably means it's not happening. So multiple streams of 4K video, multiple programs open, taking up about 32 gigabytes of RAM. I haven't been able to make this thing skip a beat. Now here's something new from my last video, and that's gaming. What, Bill? You're gaming on a Mac? That's crazy. As it turns out, I found out Baldur's Gate 3 was updated to run natively on Mac, and it actually runs really well on this M2 Max Mac Studio. So as a gamer, I'm happy to see that the Mac actually does have some capabilities here. While I don't think this M2 Max is going to replace a dedicated gaming machine anytime soon, I'm all for options. I'd love to live in a world where we can have game saves in the cloud and I could play whatever game I want on any one of these systems. I know realistically that won't happen, but a guy can dream. 
Now price and price per watt. This is a little bit of genius marketing by Apple when they show at the keynotes price to performance and performance per watt because you can see in the graph that there's definitely a part of this problem where in order to get more performance out of the GPU, you have to add more power. So they are tiptoeing around that from the standpoint of being environmentally friendly and using less energy. But the reality is this ends up with a computer that runs quieter and cooler. And in everyday use, for me, that's exactly what I want. I'd much rather take a quiet and cool running computer with the level of power that the M2 Max chip has in it as opposed to a highly inefficient space heater that also doubles as a gaming machine. Now my gaming PC is old, but there's about eight fans inside of it in order to keep this thing cool. And every time I go to look at building myself a new computer, the power requirements have increased since I've last built a PC. My rig has an 800 watt power supply inside of it. And when I go look at you know, things like the RTX 4080 and 4090, it probably makes sense with all the other things in the computer to go with a 1200 watt power supply at this point if you want to hit peak efficiency out of that power supply unit. 1200 watts. And you can clearly see the law of diminishing returns is at play here. Yes, you can dump power at this problem and get more performance, but the performance you get is less and less the further you get towards the right-hand side of the chart. All right, that's a lot of Bill being an Apple shill spewing all the good stuff about the Studio Display and Mac Studio combo. Now, let's get on with the bad. Bill, there's got to be something you don't like here. And I'm really having to reach. I'm honestly really having to reach. So nitpicking in first world problem land, the Studio Display speakers are too good. Now, how is being too good a negative? Well, if you use this thing for video editing like I do, you'd listen back to whatever track you've recorded in your video on the studio display and think, wow, that sounds really good. The speakers and the audio processing do such a great job that when you throw on a pair of headphones and go listen to your track back again, it sounds like you're listening to a different audio source altogether. So there's a little bit of fine tuning there and you can kind of tune your ears to, yeah, okay, I'm listening to this on the studio display. It's going to sound good. Let me put on a pair of headphones before I tweak the EQ at all. And that's a good practice to get into anyways with videos. You want to listen to your stuff on multiple different sources, be it, you know, a phone, a pair of headphones, studio display speakers. Next, sticking with the studio display, I wish the adjustable height stand had about another inch of vertical travel. Ergonomically for me, I would prefer to get the screen just ever so slightly higher. As it stands right now, it's maxed out and it's about level with my eye line, which puts me in a pretty decent spot, a lot better than if I would have used the non-height adjustable stand version, but I still have to tilt my head down ever so slightly as I'm using the computer. And after extended periods of time, you know, that can be not good for your neck. All right, back on the Mac Studio itself to close this video out. The last thing is the headphone jack. I wish this was in the front of the computer with the two USB-C ports and the SD card reader. Like I said, I do use wired headphones when I'm listening back to audio in the videos. I do this to dial in the EQ settings on the audio in my videos. And I really don't want to plug and unplug my headphones in every time I do that. So they end up staying plugged in all the time, taking up space on my desk. The wires are in the way and it just adds to the clutter and the mess that happens throughout the week as I'm working on different projects. Other than those very minor things, I'm extremely happy with the purchase of the Mac Studio and Apple Studio display. It's been a great addition to my setup, a joy to work on. I'm really happy with this purchase. I actually don't have any buyer's remorse or regret here. I hope this updated summary helped you out. If you're interested in my thoughts, check out this video of Premiere Pro versus Final Cut Pro. And we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.